Meiosis occurs in the gonads, which are the primary reproductive organs in both humans and other animals. Male gametes, or spermatozoa or sperm, are created during meiosis in the mature gonads, or teasts, of the male. Meiosis occurs in the adult gonads of females, called the ovaries that generate ova or eggs. Meiosis is made up of meiosis I and meiosis II, which are two cell divisions. Meiosis is the process by which homologous pairs are separated, decreasing the diploid or 2n number of chromosomes to the haploid or n number. Only one homologous pair is received by each gamete created during meiosis. For instance, one of each pair of 23 chromosomes is present in each human egg and sperm cell generated in the ovary and testis, respectively. The zygote, the first cell of the new individual, is created when the egg and sperm combine in sexual reproduction. This process regenerates the diploid number of 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. This diploid number is maintained in the body cells throughout the zygote's development through the processes of DNA replication and mitotic cell division. So, what happens in meiosis? Let's discover it. The replicated chromosomes, each made up of two identical sister chromatids, start to condense into thread-like structures at the start of prophase 1. Similar to mitosis, sister chromatid cohesion, in which cohesin proteins wrap the sister chromatids throughout the length, securely holds each pair of sister chromatids together. In a process known as synapsis or pairing, the two chromosomes of each homologous pair come together and line up side by side in a zipper-like manner. The synaptonymal complex, a protein scaffolding, aids in the tight connection. The homologs are known as tetrads when fully coupled because each one has four chromatids. In mitosis, there is no equivalent of chromosomal pairing. The chromatids of homologous chromosomes cross over to exchange portions when they are paired. Enzymes precisely split and reassemble DNA molecules from chromatids during crossing over. The sites of crossing over become visible under a light microscope as prophase 1 progresses and causes the chromosomes to further condense. The locations are known as crossovers or chiasmata. Near the end of prophase 1, when crossing over is finished, the synaptonymal complex separates and vanishes. In the cytoplasm, a spindle has developed by the end of prophase 1. The nuclear envelope disintegrates during the beginning of prometaphysi, and the spindle enters the former nuclear region. The chromosomes are connected by kinetogen microtubules, which attach to the sister kinetogens of one duplicated chromosome from one pole, and the sister kinetogens of the other duplicated chromosome from the other pole. In other words, the sister chromatids of one homolog attach to microtubules that lead to one spindle pole, whereas the sister chromatids of the other homolog attach to microtubules that go to the opposite pole. Although they do not connect to chromosomes, non kinetogen microtubules from the two poles intersect in the center of the cell. Tetrids are aligned in the equatorial plane known as the metaphase plate, which is situated between the two spindle poles via movements of the kinetogen microtubules. This procedure takes place in metaphase 1. Anaphas 1 follows. This phase is initiated when the sister chromatid cohesiveness at the centromere region is unharmed, when the enzyme separus cleaves the cohesin rings just along the arms of the sister chromatids. Each homologous pairs two chromosomes separate and migrate to opposing spindle poles. Each spindle pole receives half of the diploid number of chromosomes as a result of the migration. All chromosomes at the poles, though, continue to be double structures made up of two sister chromatids. With the exception of a small amount of decondensation or unfolding in some species, the chromosomes undergo little to no change during the brief transitory stage known as telophus 1. Some species develop new nuclear envelopes whereas others do not. The single spindle from the first meiotic division disassembles during the interkinesis that follows telophus 1, and the microtubules reconstruct into two new spindles for the second division. The chromosomes condense and the spindle develops in prophase 2, the spindle penetrates the old nuclear area when the nuclear envelope disintegrates. In Prometaphus II, kinetogen microtubules from the opposing spindle poles join with the kinetogens of each chromosome. The chromosomes are aligned on the metaphase plate in metaphase II, thanks to the motions of the spindle microtubules. During anaphase II, Seprus breaks down the remaining cohesin proteins that are keeping the sister chromatid pairs together in their centromere regions. Each chromosome's two chromatids are divided by kinetogen microtubules, which direct them in the direction of opposing spindle poles. The chromatids now known as chromosomes have been separated to the two poles at the end of anaphase II. Telophus II is the final stage. Chromosome decondensation starts, and protracted interphase is eventually reached. The spindles are separated. The masses of chromatin are encircled by fresh nuclear envelopes. Cytokinesis usually comes next. Four haploid cells with nuclei having half as many chromosomes as a G1 nucleus of the same species are the end result. We have shown in this topic that meiosis are essential for sexual reproduction. So that the number of chromosomes does not double during fertilization, meiosis makes the chromosomes haploid.
Meiosis causes genetic variety through rough crossing over and independent chromosomal distribution. Further variability is provided by the random pairing of gametes during fertilization.